Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by again. Over the past couple of weeks, I have been out to Salt Lake City, Utah, Ohio, somewhere in Wisconsin, Missouri, Kentucky, Indiana. I just did two days at home and then I picked up a load in Indiana and I'm taking it down to a little town near Dallas, Texas. This load is gonna be about 950 miles. Today I would like to talk about meal breaks and food options. Before I jump right into the food section of this video, I want to clear up a few myths about trucking. We do not have to work 70 hour weeks all the time. We do not have to work 14 hour days. We do not have to drive 11 hours a day. We do get more than one 30 minute break in a day. I'm going to show you the flexibility that we really have by showing you a couple of screens of my driver logs. Here you can see that I worked about 43 hours in a five-day period. On March 2nd, I only worked six hours and 41 minutes total. On February 26th, I only worked a total of 10 hours and five minutes. Don't worry about the column that says driving. Those hours are actually included in the column that says on duty. I'll show you what I mean on the next screen. Going down the left off, stands for off-duty, SB stands for sleeper berth, D stands for driving, ON stands for on-duty, not driving. The off-duty and sleeper berth lines both count as not working. The driving line and the on-duty line are the two lines combined that total the hours worked in our work week and in our work day. The yellow arrow is pointing to a time block starting at 1358 Eastern Time, which would be 158 PM. And that time block lasted for one hour and three minutes. On this day, I took a total of four breaks and one of those breaks lasted over an hour. Total time off duty, we can see over here on the right side with two hours and 21 minutes for that day. We can also see down in the bottom right hand section the calculation of total hours I worked that day. Nine hours and 31 minutes driving and 34 minutes on duty not driving. Now that we understand you can take as many breaks as you want and have them last as long as you want, there's one thing we really have to point out. You can only have this flexibility with your schedule as long as you get the load where it's gotta go in the time that it has to get there. You have to be on time for your pickups and your deliveries. Now let's talk about food. Most new drivers right out of school will not end up in a brand spanking new truck with a power inverter, so you probably will not be able to have a microwave in your truck right away. That's okay, you don't have to rely on truck stop food. Bring real dishes from home. Buy a large cooler. Schedule grocery shopping at supermarkets, not at truck stops. Buy dried foods and canned goods as well as perishables. The following photos are going to show foods that I like and have eaten here in the truck. Some of them I cooked, some of them I purchased at a restaurant and had leftovers here in the truck. I'm going to go through these photos a little quickly, but you can pause to read the descriptions that I wrote. The pork roast and the ribeye steak were both cooked from raw right here in the truck. For the roast, I used a small crock pot that I purchased at a truck stop. I think they call it a slow cooker. And for the steak, I used a microwave. I currently do all of my cooking in the microwave, but I didn't always have a microwave in the truck. So I do have experience with some of the small portable 12 volt, 12 volt plug-in appliances that we can buy at truck stops and use to heat water and reheat foods and actually cook foods here in the truck. The smart car pot is great for heating up water, soups, and so on. I only used it for water just to make it easier to keep it clean. The portable stove is excellent for either cooking or reheating leftovers. The one and a half quart slow cooker, that is excellent. All of these appliances, 
you can plug in and have them heating your food or boiling your water or whatever you need them to do while you are driving. They are very stable to just place flat on the floor and uh, they will not tip over, they will not spill. At least I did not have any problems with them. If you are lucky enough to have a microwave in your truck, start out with a 700 watt microwave, the smallest one that you can find. Two reasons. One, safety. You don't want to possibly end up with an electrical fire or some other problem with the truck. Two, you won't have a whole lot of space to work with. So a huge microwave like the one you have at home might not fit in the truck. So start with a small microwave. When I mentioned scheduling your grocery shopping at grocery stores instead of truck stops, namely I was talking about Walmart. It is easy for truckers to get in there, park, run inside real quick, do a quick grocery shopping trip, and then hop back in the truck and drive off. You will hear a lot of people saying it's okay to park at Walmart overnight. That's not always true. I strongly suggest you only go to Walmart for your shopping and then pull off the lot. They are starting to boot trucks so that you will have to pay a fine in order to get this mechanical device removed from your vehicle so that you can drive away. Be cautious. Plan ahead. Only park at truck stops, rest areas, and other authorized places for truckers. Why do I suggest shopping at grocery stores instead of truck stops? Because of the truck stop markup. The increase will blow your mind. A $2.20 loaf of bread at Walmart will cost $3.50 at a truck stop. It is a ridiculous markup. You can save a lot of money by planning ahead and going to a regular grocery store. So there you have it. You will have the time to eat healthier. You will not have to rely on fast food restaurants that are at these truck stops or the terrible truck stop food that is cooked at the restaurants in these truck stops. You do have options as far as cooking in the truck with or without a microwave. Good luck and drive safely. Pick me up off the floor and set me straight. Put me on course. Don't let me deviate. Never thought this could happen.
Sweet morning.